when I first started with the song, uh, the way that I was presented with Julian's vocal was actually completely clean. There was no effects on on the channel whatsoever. So if I if I play how I basically was presented his um, presented with his vocal. They've been saying you're sophisticated. Kind of just a very very just standard recording of um, a great voice. Um, but then to kind of give the sound that at, that's very well known within you know, this band, I then had to do quite a bit of processing on it. And so I've essentially, within Pro Tools, created a duplicate of his channel, um, which on it I've, I've, so I basically got two lots going of him. The first one is just a kind of a slightly more driven uh, using isotope trash. They've been saying which kind of is thinned it out as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of already got the kind of that more um, mid-range that he is very well known for. They've been saying you're sophisticated They're complaining And with that as well I'm using a C6 to, to control it a bit more as well. Um, so using that to control the bottom end Again, some EQ to do the same. You are and then again, a, an 1176 plugin. This is all pre the vocal chain that I use as well. So this is just this is just in the box stuff that I'm doing at this point. The malt that I then created of his of his vocal is way more driven. Um, I mean, as you can see on the on the first channel, I've actually got the the Sans amp plugin and the L1 as well. More than anything, that was just to make sure that um, sample rates, like sample basing stuff was, was good to keep the phase as, as close as possible because sometimes it can go out with these guys if they're all running at the same time. But basically on this, this is like a completely, you know, really, really thinned out using the Sans Amp plugin and then limiting it really, really hard to take off any of the peaks. To do that, basically doing that, you're, you're creating a box for him to sit in and so that the the initial vocal can kind of be the one that still gives the dynamic of his voice. This malt then can just kind of create a middle ground for him. It creates that mid region. The two of them together just kind of just brings out the, the, the fizz of his voice. Take it out, put it back in and, it's, and you can, it's definitely that kind of very clear sound. That would then be going up the console, which then goes into the, the vocal chain that I use. The vocal chain that I use is, well on this song was a Pultec EQP1A EQ for just kind of an overall kind of big EQ that um, can do top and bottom. On this I definitely was, I was actually, even though it's a, he has quite a, uh, you know, like a thinner sounding vocal in terms of the way you treat it, I actually was adding quite a lot of 100 because I basically taking it out in, in the box. So I was adding the kind of richness of the, of the analog EQ and then adding a bit more top, that then goes from that into an 1176, which is on a fast speed. What that's then doing is it's pulling the, you know, pulling the vocal back quite quickly, grabbing any of the, the kind of big peaks in the voice. But also I kind of use the, the faster attack and release. So using the 100 hertz of the pull tech into the faster attack of, of, the, of the 1176, it's gonna grab the bass response as well quite quick. So what you're doing is you're adding it and making the compressor work a bit harder than it actually would do if it didn't have the bottom end in there. And so it's just really grabbing that vocal and, and reacting to the bottom end of his voice again, which can give it kind of, for him, it gives it excites his voice in a really nice way. Out of that, you then go into, I went, went into a TubeTech CL1B, which is a lot slower attack and release. And that's just used as a leveler and just to kind of no matter how far he's going or quiet he is, it's just constantly just rounding off the voice quite nicely. And then from that, I go into a 1081 on the line input and just use the EQs on that. On this tune, I actually didn't use any of the actual EQ part of it, I just used the filters. Um, and it was just the low pass filter, kind of really reduced down a couple of clicks just to kind of get rid of any of the top high kind of hi-fi quality of, of the vocal because you just don't want that really um for him he kind of just needs to sit in this in this certain place and no matter what he's doing he always has to kind of just feel like he's there you can't as, as dynamic as he is as a singer the actual treatment of his vocal doesn't need to be super super dynamic he kind of has a softness to his voice but it just always is cutting through always kind of cutting through everything um the song 
he actually starts off completely bone dry. There's there's no reverb, no effects, no nothing on his voice. It's just absolutely bone dry. Just the the two channels running together into the uh, vocal chain. As the song progresses, it's just kind of nice to just introduce little pieces of of that for for him. It just allows the song to kind of grow, and is always kind of just like. As you kind of, as a mixer, I like to try and push the intensity of a song as it's going along, even if it's doing very similar things. It's like the second verse and the first verse, the second verse should always just feel like maybe not even necessarily louder. It should just feel like it's slightly leaning in a bit more on itself. It's pushing a little bit harder and adding vocal effects can help with that kind of movement. Because on this, it's, I haven't used a reverb on him necessarily. I've just used a slap. And so what that does is it creates a kind of second rhythm to his voice. That when you're using it with the guitars that are very kind of like, tightly picked, you then can start creating the syncopation between the vocal and the guitars where they start bouncing off of each other. And I realized very quickly, going back to the, my kind of views on the on the rough mix where the, the rhythm wasn't quite right, I realized in this, it's like, as well as the drums and the bass, if you've got the guitar rhythmically going as it should against Julian's voice, you've then got this huge rhythm of the song and it basically becomes like a dance song. 